the Department of Justice just recently announced that the leader of Mexico's United Cartels have been arrested and charged with trying to import 1,100 pounds of crystal meth. That's a lot. 1,100 pounds is a lot of drugs. These guys were apparently trying to do that. DOJ posted a press release yesterday on Thursday, April 1st, detailing what happened here. And so we're going to go through the press release. Then we're going to go through the criminal complaints because it is an interesting one. I think it's about 20 something pages. We're not going to go through the whole thing, but it is interesting because it does read. If you've ever seen the movie or the TV show Breaking Bad, almost like that, the way that all of this was unfolding was just fascinating. And so typically, you know, you read these DOJ announcements and it's like, well, you know, they were combing through somebody's computer files and it's a lot of bland, boring stuff. This was not because they were dissolving the crystal meth in uh, regular house paint and then extracting it out of the paint. They were putting it in concrete uh, barriers so that they could crack open the concrete and sort of smuggle this stuff in. Very interesting. So we're going to get into it. Let's start off, though, with the press release. You can see here it says the leader of Mexico's United Cartels and others have been charged in the South Florida federal court with importing over 1,100 pounds of meth. South Florida federal prosecutors have charged the leader and five others for their alleged roles in importing into the U.S. over 500 kilos, which is 1,100 pounds, of Mexican methamphetamine. In the largest meth seizure in the Miami-Dade County history, law enforcement agents seized over 1,100 pounds of meth before it ever hit the streets. The defendants are charged in two separate complaints, and so I'm going to show you both of these. I'm going to show you what I got for both of them, at least. Several, several different charges, drug conspiracy, we have drug trafficking, drug importation, other crimes. One complaint names, we're going to use uh, initials for last names because they have very long names and it's difficult to pronounce. So we have somebody named CR, who is Frudo, that's easier, who is the former mayor of Agalia, Mexico, according to the allegations. We also have, uh, we have a Rustrian, we have CR, Rustru they were arrested, arrested in Guatemala. Let's put it that way. We've got a lot of people who are arrested in Guatemala on March 30th. A second criminal complaint charges another four defendants with their roles. So we have Compran Badola, we have Basura Cotto, Gonzalez, Valdez. Law enforcement officers arrested these four defendants in Miami on March 30th. So we had two arrests happening simultaneously, both in two different locations. We had two people in Guatemala. We had four people in Miami. Both went down on March 30th. So presumably that was sort of a banging day for law enforcement. They have made their initial appearances. They're scheduled for detention hearings in a federal magistrate court in Miami on April 7th. So very interesting case. Now, when you try to look up the first one, here's what you get. It's been sealed already. Isn't that interesting? So I plug this in and you'll notice already sealed off. Judge EGT sealed it versus sealed, sealed case. So we're not going to see anything about that one which is too bad, but the other one is not sealed. So we can go and take a look at this. And here it is. You'll notice that this is the complaint against Adalberto Campron Bedoya. Bedoya, Bedia, filed out of the Southern District of Florida. This is the case number, criminal complaint by telephone. And you'll notice it wasn't just telephone, it was actually FaceTime. So they got their arrest warrant, their criminal complaint filed by FaceTime. This was signed off by Special Agent Shad Ashelman from the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration, signed off on by Honorable Jonathan Goodman, the U.S. Magistrate Judge. And we got a whole slew of charges all filed out of the Southern District of Florida, ranging on or about January 21st to March 20th. So all this was happening this year, very recently. Conspiracy to import 500 grams or more containing a detectable amount of meth, Another importation, another meth charge, conspiracy to possess. We've got possession of intent to distribute and on and on. And we've got another one, conspiracy to launder money. So they filled out this affidavit. We're going to read through it. Now, as I mentioned, this is a pretty long document in terms of these criminal complaints. Well, not really, but we're, we're not going to read the whole thing because we're just going to clip through some of the good stuff. So here is the affidavit. This says, I've been a special agent with the U.S. Department of DEA Assigned with them for a long period of time, I am good at what I do. I respectfully submit that there's probable cause for these people to commit these crimes. Import 500 grams, another 500 grams, intent to distribute 500 grams or more. So we're going to skip over all of that. We're going to go down to paragraph four for the probable cause statement. Beginning in January of this year, a confidential source. So we're going to use initials, as we said. So CS is confidential source. That's going to be a big one. We're going to see a lot of that. So it's somebody who's undercover feeding them information, and, and it's not 
so when I say undercover, it's not part of the FBI or the DEA or a law enforcement agency. It's somebody who's a confidential source who's already in that side. An undercover agent is going to be somebody who's, who's uh, noted differently for this document. So just wanted to clear that up. So this is somebody who's acting at the direction of law enforcement, somebody who's a confidential source. They conducted a series, series of meetings in Colombia with members of United Cartels from Mexico. Those individuals included Rustrian and Rodriguez. And according to Rustrian, he was a Cali-based money launderer and a cocaine broker that regularly distributed 25 kilos of cocaine from Colombia to Mexico and ultimately into the States. It's a lot. It's a lot of cocaine. He's a criminal associate of someone else named Camperon Rodriguez, who is the person who's being charged in this complaint. No, it's not him. It's a different Camperon. So you can see how hard this, how hard this stuff is to keep track of. Camperon Badola is the person we're talking about over here. This is Camperon Rodriguez. So we're, we're, we've got two Camperons in here. The former mayor of the, of the minutes, uh, keeping track of the names, by the way, is not important for this. According to Rustrian, Camperon is a leader of the United Cartels of Mexico. He's a former member of the Knights Templar cartel. According to somebody else, Rodriguez, there is a, he's a distributor of heroin and meth from Mexico into the U.S. through Houston, Texas, Atlanta, and Georgia. All right, so on or about January 21st, at a restaurant in Cali, Colombia, Rustrian introduced the confidential source to Camperon Rodriguez. That meeting was audio and video recorded. Thank you, confidential source. During the meeting, the confidential source told Camperon that he worked with a group of Lebanese people that were looking to fund political campaigns of government officials in Mexico. The confidential source further explained that he was a representative of Hezbollah and the Hassan Nasrallah family, and he had handled their distribution of cocaine in the United States. The CS told Camperon Rodriguez that he wanted assistance in Mexico so that Hezbollah operatives could enter the United States in order to commit crime there. Rodriguez replied by explaining that he had created an auto defense group in the town of Aguilia in Mexico. Based on my training and experience, I know that auto defense groups are in Mexico created by prominent local citizens and they're formed to fight back against the violence of drug cartels. So these citizen defense groups. However, in this case, the auto defense group that was funded by Camperon Rodriguez eventually also became in drug, involved in drug trafficking. According to Rodriguez, he wanted to use an organization of auto defense groups to eliminate a competing cartel, the El Menchos cartel. Based on my whatever, we move on to paragraph 24. On or about March 19th, so just recently, there was a plan for delivery of methamphetamine that changed. And the CS was informed that the initial shipment of meth would not arrive in paint, but in large concrete tiles. The same day, Badola told CS that two truckers had been hired by the organization to transport the concrete tiles containing the meth to Miami. This was the methamphetamine that CS had previously negotiated with Rustrian and Camperon. So they're now going to be putting these in concrete containers and sending them in in these tiles. The tiles containing the meth had come from Mexico, and they were stashed by the organization in Texas. The two drivers then would drive the tiles containing the meth on a truck from Texas over to Florida. Of note, about a week before this change in plans, 1,000 kilos of meth in paint were seized after crossing a bridge from Mexico to Texas. Based on my training and experience, I believe this interception caused Rodriguez and his conspirators to change their plans. So they were putting it in this paint. They would dissolve the meth, the crystal meth, into paint. Can't tell what it is in there. Then they would bring it back here into the United States and then extract it. Almost like in Breaking Bad when uh, they're bringing in the chicken. The chicken, right? Wasn't, wasn't the chicken? Carrying on, the truck transporting the meth arrived in South Florida on the evening of March 20th. The truck drove undercover to an, I'm sorry, the truck, the truck drove to an undercover law enforcement warehouse in the Miami area. So they're setting up a sting. When the truck arrived, Camperon Badola called his father and told him that the drivers had arrived at the warehouse. An additional undercover agent, UC2, used a forklift to remove four crates of concrete tile from the truck's trailer. The tile was placed into the warehouse and the drivers left the area. After the drivers left, Undercover 1, Undercover 2, and the CS and Camperon Badola broke the tiles open using hammers. From within the tiles, law enforcement recovered approximately 200 kilograms of wrapped methamphetamines. The methamphetamine was field tested 
which confirmed that it was in fact methamphetamine. The undercover warehouse was wired to record audio and video and the removal of the meth from the tiles was recorded by law enforcement. Early on the morning of March 27th, confidential source UC1 and UC2 arrived at the warehouse and unloaded the paint buckets into the warehouse. After unloading the paint bucket, so we skipped a little bit. You'll notice we went from the 20s, paragraph 26 to paragraph 31. So we're talking about the paint buckets now. After unloading the paint buckets, they left the warehouse in order to meet with two chemists, what had been sent by Comparon Rodriguez, to help with the extraction of the methamphetamine from the paint. The confidential source and Comparon Badola drove to the hotel where the chemists were staying, and they had the chemists follow in their own vehicle back to the warehouse. The chemists were identified as Silviano, Gonzalez, Aguilar, and Valdez. On Tuesday, March 30th, both undercovers continued to extract meth with them, with the chemists at the warehouse. The undercover cops are extracting meth from paint that's been smuggled into the country. They ultimately were able to extract roughly 18 pounds of methamphetamine from two buckets of paint. Those are five gallon buckets, I would, I would imagine, right? What do those weigh? Probably about 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds. Eight times, about 50 pounds, maybe. So they got 18 pounds, about nine, nine pounds per bucket. And, and the undercover cops are working in the meth lab, helping them extract this out of the paint. It's straight out of Breaking Bad. The same day, the confidential source had arranged undercover one and Comparon Badola and Cotto to meet at a local hotel to transfer the expected 4.15 million in drug proceeds. That afternoon, UC1 and Badola met with Cotto. After brief introductions with all three, Cotto said that he would move his vehicle closer. He moved the car two spaces and opened the trunk. Undercover 1 and Badola removed a large suitcase from their trunk, and they placed it in Cotto's vehicle. Undercover 1 then opened the suitcase and displayed a, displayed a large amount of fake currency. Cotto agreed that it looked good, shut his hatch. At that point, both Cotto and Badola were arrested. Wow. Conclusion. Based on the information contained in the affidavit, I, I say that there's enough probable cause for the issuance of a criminal complaint, charging them with all of these charges and possession and so on, all signed off on by Special Agent Shad Ashelman, DEA, signed off on by FaceTime, and the Honorable Jonathan Goodman. What a complaint. All right. So let's see if we can hop into the live chat just a little bit and see what's going on over on YouTube before we call it a day. And it looks like we can get this going. Let's see what's going on here. All right, we've got a couple, uh, couple comments we can bring in. We've got Danette says, no, that's a, that's a conversation. All right. Carnival Barker says, I was captivated by the Breaking Bad series. So well put together. That's right. It was a good show. We have Danette says Breaking Bad was a pretty go good showing of the industry. We've got Wolfgang Deo says, don't come into the chat. You don't want to see this. We have, let's see what else is going on. We got AJ Millis in the house says, hey, Rob, my man. What's up, AJ? Good to see you. We have Don't Mind Me says, while you might find that strange, the chemicals used in the manufacturing of legal drugs wouldn't sound healthy either. That is from Don't Mind Me. We have David M. says, Senator at the border claimed there were 250 miles of unfinished wall already paid for. That doesn't sound good. We have Greg in Houston says, Robert is going to the live chat. It's been a long time since he has done that. What's up, Greg? I know it's been a long time. You know, I've been kind of throwing a temper tantrum at YouTube because they have demonetized us. And so I've been uh, neglecting the YouTube chat, but I love you all. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's no doubt about that, but we've just been sort of prioritizing over at locals. And because we didn't start a live chat in locals, my fault. Here we are. We have Rivera says, stay out, Rob. Don't want to be in there. We got lean J says, Robert, how are you? I'm good. Lean. It's good to see you. We have Charlie Howard says 1000s of tons of drugs a year. Who cares? Biden's happy. Wolfgang Deo says, any news on Corn Pop? Has he been discovered? You know, I don't know where Corn Pop is. He might just still be roaming around the mountainsides causing havoc, that old Corn Pop. We got Renee says, hi, Rob. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Renee. Beth Coddington. Hey, Beth. Good to see you. We have Ryan Jackson says, go to Portland. Everything is legal and there are no more illegal drugs. 
We have Rob. You don't want to see what's what we've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, we got we to gotta get back into it at some point. We have uh, Beth Coddington says, been on Locals, not been here for a while. Yeah, we've been going on over there. Procrastination Station says, get Discord. Well, we have Discord. We had a Discord. We got canceled off Discord. They called me a white supremacist, I think. <laughs> they said uh, we were uh, contributing to hate speech or something like that. I don't know what it was. We tried to appeal it, and they um, they said, you're off. We're dangerous. I'm a dangerous man. Very dangerous. We have Temper Tant says, my existence system abides. Damn, he's finally talking to the chat. Yeah, of course. Could I shake your hand on vacation? Yeah, if, if I see you around, no problem. Wolfgang Deo says, how about an IRC server? Maybe. Maybe we could do IRC. We've also thought about Slack. We've also thought about, there's another one that I think somebody recommended, but we'll see where it goes. We've got, why were you demonetized? That's from M Ball. You know, they didn't really tell us a whole lot. They said that we were harmful. We had harmful content that was dangerous to viewers. And I don't really know what that was all about. I thought that our stuff was pretty benevolent, really. And we just got an email one day that said, nope, you're off. So we applied, we reapplied actually, on March 5th and they said it would take 30 days and they would notify us. And so literally on March 5th, we reapplied 30 days, maybe Monday we'll get an answer, but I'm not holding my breath. We have Beth Coddington says, you are the worst Rob. I know, I know it. I know, I, I know. I have a difficult time living with myself. It's just brutal. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. We have Rob, what ham radio channel do we chat on? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Curtis Bartle said, you made them feel dumb. Wolfgang says, I guess Clubhouse is better. Yeah, Clubhouse is fun. You know, I, I just saw on Twitter that they have Twitter spaces now, but I haven't really figured out. I saw it on my app, on my Android, and it said that it's available, but now I don't know how to get it or use it. But there are, you know, I think Facebook's working on one. YouTube's probably working on a stage type space, just like Clubhouse. So Clubhouse, I think, was just temporary, but we'll end up moving to whatever platform is a little bit more inclusive. And one that, of course, supports free speech. That's what I kind of liked about Clubhouse more so than some of these other spaces. Places like Twitter, you know, we already know how they fall as it relates to these issues, and we want to support the new platforms that are a little bit more inclusive of a lot of ideas. We have somebody saying, let's see, classic historian says, sounds like Soviet Russia. Should we be careful with this chat content? We have uh, Robert. I think my super chats were too spicy for YouTube. I, I think, I think this is a very polite channel. Very polite. Everybody keeps it very civil here. We have K bean said that Rob works out. I do. I try to got to stay healthy. Got to look good what it's all about. David M says Floyd was passing out in the car. Passengers told him to rabbit. We have Phil Ging says Trump is usually in the clubhouse. Yes, I would join. I would join. I would at least poke around on Trump's new platform. No question. Right. I mean, how would you not? A lot of the news will be made on that platform. And so you have to be there if you're somebody who comments on this stuff. We have Christine says, I think you missed your calling as a comedian. I don't know about that. I, I, I like I, I personally like my own jokes. I laugh at myself all the time. I have conversations in my head. I'm like, that's just brilliant. But, I, but I, uh, a lot of other people in my life just don't necessarily agree with that, nor should they, on second thought. We have, Rob, how come no Narcan for Floyd? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. We have Playing Hook. He says, Rob, buy more shirts. The chat is full of themselves about your wardrobe. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I have... I have sort of a routine. I'm a simple guy. I like to keep things relatively simple. I have some shirts that I just wear. You know, I think Steve Jobs had that thing right about just wearing the same outfit every day. There's something to it, which is why I just, I'm a polo slacks kind of guy. That's it. We have, we have, yeah. You were in the chat earlier. Rob, you were such a great commentator. You're intelligent and sound, of sound mind. You beat the media by a million miles. Well, that's so nice of you, Jay JC. Blazak says that. Thank you, JC. That's very nice of you. I, you know, I'm trying my best. I think we're having fun here and it's, I'm learning a lot. I'm enjoying it a ton. So thank you for supporting this. Thank you for being here and allowing us to have this conversation. I appreciate it. We have Bianca Perez says you are handsome every day, no matter what you wear. Thank you, Bianca. Very sweet. Thank you. 
I'll keep going with this. Rob, would you date AOC? Absolutely. Yes. Let's just, let's go. Let's try it. Let's see how, what happens. You know, it probably last. Well, I don't know. You know, I, I, I'd give it a shot. I think it probably lasts about 30 seconds as soon as we sat down. <laughs> but, you know, I happen to be in a nice, very happy relationship right now. So that wouldn't work. Of course we have Robert hope Penny is okay. At least her poop will come pre bagged. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that's too funny. Yes. So Penny's just great. Uh, Faith has brought her into the office a few times and uh, she just goes, you know, she, she's a puppy. She just has so much energy jumping all over the place and having a lot of fun. So uh, we, you know, I was like, well, what the heck happened to her? She's, she's young. She's healthy. What, you know, ha what, what went wrong? And then of course, Faith said, well, she swallowed a sock. And I thought, oh yeah, I know this dog. I know the personality of this dog. That's absolutely perfect for her. So it makes total sense. We have Wolfgang says, don't date crazy. I, you know, that's a good lesson. I haven't learned that quite yet. So maybe one day I'll wise up a little bit. We have, we have don't mind me says even things like Narcan, you need to be careful what drugs they are taking. These pills looking like Percocet might've thrown them off. AOC looks like one of the witches in the wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> you know, AOC, it would be worth the story. My look, that's it. That's really what I'm getting down to, right? It would be worth the story. And some things you just got to do for the story, even AOC. All right, we'll take a couple more questions. Let's see what else is going on. Canadian watch you every night. That comes from Duncan Bard. Great show. Thanks, Duncan. I appreciate that. You know, I was, uh, I was looking at some pictures. I think in 2018, I was in Quebec. I went uh, dog sledding up there. I had a great time. Great people. Had a lot of fun traveling around up there. And I, and, uh, our, our very outstanding Ma Fox hails from there. So good people up there in that part of the world. We've got Wolfgang says there are various levels of crazy, but it's better to pick bed crazy and not mind crazy. That's a good point. Wolfgang valid, very valid. All right. Wolfgang, Wolfgang is asking that not all Canadians are communists. I don't think so. I don't know. Viva Viva's from Canada. He's not a communist. We're, we've got a good track record here of no communists from Canada. So that's all fun. How's the weather in Scottsdale? The weather is warm today. It went, it was like up to like 90 degrees in April. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready, not ready for it, but we're going to, uh, we're going to enjoy a little bit of pool weather coming up pretty soon. So I'm excited about that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and leave it at that, my friends. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to hop out of the chat and we're going to thank those of you who support us over at locals.com. We have uh, these great people in the house. We're going to say thank you to Sarah Smothers. We're going to say thank you to On My Knees. We're going to say thank you to Nord Sven and Sarah Hagar. We've got J Bone in the house. We got Zuck signing up, Norovira, and some new people signed up. We got Colby 2020 in the house. We got Texas Laurel. Welcome. And we have Big Jono all over here signing up and supporting the program over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. So if you want to join a great community on the internet and help support a platform that is really, in my opinion, pretty, pretty nicely focused on some of these issues about free speech and free idea and free expression, I think Locals is a good place to do that. So go on over there and sign up and support us if you can. It's really good reasons to do so. Grab a copy of my book. It's called Beginning to Winning. Take a look at the slides. I will go ahead and post the slides that we went through today on Locals. You can get a, grab a copy of the Impeachment Party documents, the Existence System program, and share links. And, of course, meet, meet great people over at Locals.com. And before we wrap up and get out of here, quick reminder that I am a criminal defense lawyer here at the r, &R Law Group, where we help good people charged with crimes. We have a passion to help them find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and in their lives. And so if you happen to know anybody in the state of Arizona who has been charged with a crime, we would be honored and humbled if you sent them our way because we can help. doesn't matter what it is. If it's a DUI, domestic violence, drug crime, something like a disorderly conduct, leaving the scene of an accident, urinating in public, any of these things that are happening now that the society is starting to open back up a little bit, if you happen to get in trouble, we can help. We're passionate about what we do and we offer free case evaluation. So if you 
have anybody you know who needs some help, we would be honored and humbled if you trusted us enough to send them our direction. We'll make sure we take very good care of them. And that is it from me. We're going to be back here same time, same place on Monday. 4 p.m. Arizona time, which is Pacific time, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. on the East Coast. Everybody have a very lovely weekend. We've got a lot to get back to here next week, right back into it with Derek Chauvin and many other things. So rest up, unplug from politics a little bit. We'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye-bye.